parables about life. The offended student and potatoes. A wise parable that tells whether we should hold grudges in our heart. A student asked the teacher, You are so wise. You're always in a good mood, never angry. Help me to be like that. The teacher agreed and asked the student to bring potatoes and a transparent bag. If you get angry at someone and hold a grudge, said the teacher, then take this potato. On the one hand, write your name. On the other hand, the name of the person with whom the conflict occurred, and put this potato in a bag. Is that all? The disciple asked in bewilderment? No, the teacher replied. You should always carry this bag with you. And every time you take offense at someone, add potatoes to it. The student agreed. Some time has passed. The student's package was replenished with several more potatoes and has already become quite heavy. It was very inconvenient to always carry it with you. In addition, the potatoes that he put in the very beginning began to deteriorate. It was covered with a slippery nasty coating. Some sprouted, some bloomed and began to emit a sharp unpleasant smell. The student came to the teacher and said, It is no longer possible to carry it with you. Firstly, the package is too heavy, and secondly, the potatoes have deteriorated. Suggest something else. But the teacher replied, The same thing happens in your soul. When you get angry at someone, you get offended, then a heavy stone appears in your soul. You just don't notice it right away. Then the stones become more and more. Actions turn into habits, habits, into a character that gives rise to fetid vices. And it is very easy to forget about this load, because it is too heavy to carry it with you all the time. I gave you the opportunity to observe the whole process from the outside. Every time you decide to be offended or, on the contrary, offend someone, think about whether you need this stone. Teacher. One day a teacher asked his students, why do people raise their voices during quarrels? The students began to guess. Probably, they are losing their calm. They are overwhelmed with emotions. They have such a temperament. Then the teacher said, all right, but why raise your voice if the second person is next to you? The students remained silent. They didn't know what to say. And then the teacher continued. When people quarrel, their hearts and souls move away. Therefore, in order to hear each other, they have to raise their voices. And the more resentment and anger grow, the louder they have to shout. And then the disciples asked, and what happens when people are in love? Their hearts are very close. Therefore, they do not need to raise their voice. They can speak very quietly, the teacher replied. And when people love each other, the students did not calm down. Then they don't even need words, the teacher replied. Their eyes tell everything. Remember, the fiercer the quarrel, the more the distance between you increases. Do not abuse shouting. Do not say words that distance you. Otherwise, one day there will come a day when you will be so far apart that you will no longer be able to find a way back to each other. A piece of clay and a cup. A parable about life that tells why obstacles are needed. There was a young man who lived in the world. He liked all sorts of old trinkets, 
and he wandered around the world in search of unusual things that he found in junk shops. He was especially interested in teacups, because, as it seemed to him, they could tell a lot of interesting things. One day, in a distant, unfamiliar country, he came across an antique shop where he found an old teacup. The young man picked up the find and began to examine it, when suddenly the cup spoke to him. My dear wanderer, I have not always been a cup. There was a time when pointlessness was my only entertainment. I was just a piece of red clay. I've been lying in the ground for thousands of years. Centuries passed before me. People fought and made peace. Civilizations were born and died. Suddenly my master came. He picked me up, carried me to the workshop threw me on a wooden table and began to crumple and roll me until I screamed. Enough. Leave me alone. It was very painful, but he just smiled and, shaking his head, said, it's not time yet. Then he threw me on the potter's wheel, and the world spun in front of me so fast that it merged into a solid fog. What are you doing? I whispered. I feel bad. Stop this nightmare. But the master only sighed understandingly and said quietly, It's not time yet, continuing to turn the circle and shape me. And then he carefully put me in the oven. I didn't know there was such a heat in the world. I screamed and tried to open the oven door. It's hotter here than hell. I shouted, All burn to the ground. Let me out quickly. But through the window in the stove I saw the master looking at me. And his lips repeated, It's not time yet. And so, when it seemed to me that my last minute was coming, the door opened. The master carefully took me out of the oven and put me on the shelf, where I breathed freely. It's good to finally be left alone. But it wasn't the end. As soon as I came to my senses, the master took me off the shelf, looked at me carefully and shook off the dust. He was going to paint me and varnish me. His poisonous fumes enveloped me, and I was already beginning to lose consciousness. Please have mercy on me. Don't you feel sorry for me? Please leave me alone. Please don't. I moaned. But the master just shook his head and said, as usual, it's not time yet. When he finished applying the varnish, he put me back in the oven. This time it was much hotter than the first time. I realized right away, this is my death. I begged him, begged, threatened, shouted. At the end I started crying, but there were no tears, even fiery ones. I realized that I was living the last moment of my life, I had no more strength. Suddenly, at the very last second, already falling into the black abyss of nothingness, I felt the hands of the master take me and pull me out of the furnace. He put me back on the shelf, where I cooled down and waited. An hour later, the master returned, came up to me and put a mirror in front of me. Look at you, he said. What I saw in the mirror was so wonderful that I exclaimed, it's not me. It couldn't have been me. It was so beautiful, incredibly beautiful. Then I heard the master's compassionate words. This is what you were supposed to become. When I was rolling you out, I had to expel the air, otherwise you would have split quickly. The poisonous fumes of the varnish were unbearable for you. But without it, your life would have remained as gray as it was before. The oven was the hardest test for you, but it strengthened you. Now you have turned from a lump of clay into a wonderful cup. Now you have appeared in a new capacity.